One of the most common recommendations I've come across for good sound quality at under $25 is the Truth Ear Gate. If you can actually get full and detailed sound at that price point, it would be a great value. But do these IAMs sound as clear as they look? Let's start with what it's like to use and find out. Despite the budget pricing, you get the regular fare of items in the box. I didn't expect a carry case with the price, but one is included in the box, which is a nice bonus. Unfortunately, the case uses a terribly stiff spring steel closing mechanism. I only bother using this for storing the three remaining ear tips. The wire is pliable, but a little stiff with an inline microphone, terminated with the usual 3.5 millimeter connector. The cable can disconnect from the earbuds themselves, connected via a two pin connection. I despise this connector because I can't turn it to adjust the position of the ear hooks. That's why I prefer MMZX. Through the transparent earbuds, you can see a nice view of the internal dynamic driver of the Truth Ear Gate. It's a nice design touch as the wires are neatly tucked to one side. They don't seem to pick up fingerprints, but they seem to be susceptible to micro sketches. They fit in my ears just fine, and they are light without any notable points of pressure. Wearing these for a long time at over six hours didn't pose any issues either. Being wired IEMs, these don't cancel any noise. They do block out some sound though. Our lab test shows that the passive isolation can block up to nine decibels of low frequency noise and up to 35 decibels of high frequency noise, which is about normal for IEMs. The microphone on the truth ear gate would sound great, but there is a constant screeching sound in the background. If you want audio samples for the inline microphone, including tests in simulated environments like wind, the office, and street noise, check out the full article on soundguys.com in the description below. For the price, the Truth Ear Gate have excellent sound quality that will please most listeners even if they are lacking some treble detail. We can take a look at the scores of MDAX from Head Acoustics, scored from 1 to 5 based on what is considered good by a virtual panel of listeners. With an MDAX score of 4.9 for Timber, most people will enjoy how they sound out of the box. The distortion score of 4.2 is within the range of what most people find difficult to notice. Still, it is on the better scoring end of IEMs. The immersiveness score of 3.6 is within the typical range for most IEMs. The higher the score, the more likely the better it is in competitive shooters, but more on that in the gaming section. Now, for my personal experience with the Truth Ear Gate. The base of the Truth Ear Gate has decent extension, but I find that the kick drums get lost in terribly busy tracks like Sepia by Mori Calliope and Tobo. The kick drum almost vanishes from the mix. The feeling of pressure is still obvious, but the vocals and guitar easily overpower it. With a punch of high frequency, can see transients underemphasized. Vids and vocals aren't the most detailed when listening to Technicolor by Sepia Tonic. I find that it feels slightly compressed. The detail in the fluctuations of the sound from the trumpets isn't lost, but it's not as apparent as I would prefer personally. The subtle reverberance of the vocal recording is also lost in the track, making it sound a little boxy instead. The treble didn't seem very bright to me and lacks a sense of spaciousness. Sounds feel too close, especially in breathy performances like Michi Mochi V's cover of Medicine by Daughter. The breaths at the end of the vocals lack a sense of space from the trailing reverb, almost as if they're cut off by a pillow at the end. The same applies to the piano in the track. While it doesn't sound titty, it lacks the brilliance I look for. The subtle clicks and pops added to the background of the track that evoked the feeling of listening to an old vinyl record seem to disappear from the mix. Despite having a decent bass extension and treble not being painfully sibilant at any point, it's a touch boxy. My sentiment of the truth ear gate might sound negative, but it's not that bad. For $20, these actually sound Good. For most people, there isn't much to complain about. I've had much better, but at a much steeper cost, such as the Sennheiser IE600 at an eye-watering $900. That's an entire computer. All the way down to the pretty common Panasonic ErgoFit at $24 which you can easily find at your local grocers. Personally, I think the Truth Ear Gate sounds better than most of those grocery bargain bin earphones. For the lab tests, the Truth Ear Gate isn't a complete departure from the sound guy's preference curve. The bass is slightly boosted at the 20 Hz sub bass region compared to our preference, but the bass is lower than our preference overall. The same goes with the mids with a dip from 200 Hz to 500, other than following the curve closely up to 3 kHz. The treble is much lower than the preference with a huge dip at 10 kHz. In gaming, you can game with the Truth Ear Gate, depending on the type of game you're playing. In dialogue heavy story games like Cyberpunk 2077, the dialogue doesn't get lost in the mix, even with background music and other environmental noise. For cozy games like The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, high-pitched sounds like the crystalline chimes of summoning aren't painful. Action games on the other hand, like Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, where you punch and shoot bad guys after sneaking around a bunch, 
are a little underwhelming. Firing a weapon doesn't come with the loud and powerful crack of a gunshot, and the exaggerated sound of punches from the game audio falls flat. In competitive shooters like Apex Legends, it's difficult to pick out the specific location of the sound, and the ability to locate sounds from left to right on the truth air gate is the bare minimum. It was very difficult for me to pick up the L-Star firing right behind me, or notice the direction of sounds other than somewhere to my right or left. They also have the shallow sense of depth, where most sounds are either near or close by, and seemingly nothing in between. On MOBAs such as League of Legends, it's hard to pick out distinct sounds like the teleport twinkles, but passable only because you can easily hear comms even mid-clash. The Truth Ear Gate doesn't sound bad for the price, it comes with some compromises. It is lacking in travel, they sound a touch boxy, pretty compressed, and lack some detail. You can get much worse from over-the-counter IEMs you can buy from your local Walmart or Target. For those who are looking to spend as little as possible without compromising too much in sound quality, the truth of your gate is worth picking up. But if you have a bigger budget, is it worth spending over $100 for IEMs? Check out this video. Premium is where the best value is, not luxury. Wait, is under $300 luxury these days or is that still premium?